Remember the name Ogwejofo Namdi Chukudi, or should I say Namdi Chukudi Ogwejofo. He's an artist based here in Abuja who uses charcoal, among other things, to produce paintings about people, their lives, and events around them so brilliantly that it's surprising to learn that he's autodidactic. That means he's self-taught. We'll explore his work and how he uses it to reflect, teach, grow, and elevate individual and collective social consciousness. But for now, uh, Namdi is in the studio with me, and hopefully he'll take us through that journey. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you for having me. Um, let me start by asking you how it is that you got into this, because from what I read, you're, you're self-taught. I mean, first of all, let me congratulate you. I think your, your work is absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank um, you. But how did you get into it? I mean, because, I mean, one thinks of your life in a particular direction and then your work and then both of them sort of coming together. Um, how did they... Did that happen? Did it suddenly happen? Did you leap out of the bathroom, shout Eureka, and there it was, the ability to, you know, scratch on paper? Well, I've been, I was born with the talent. I've been an artist like all my life. I've been always drawing on paper with pencil, pens. So this charcoal on canvas thing, I just figured out it could work during the COVID-19 lockdown. Mm. I realized that charcoal could actually work on canvas and I'm like, okay. So 2020, that's when I made my first charcoal works. Those ones, I kept them for reserve. And, you know, I, since it worked, I was still a photographer at that time. I still did two pictures for money. So I, I still just kept the art thing to myself until <coughs> I came to Abuja. At first, I went to Calabar. I tried photography some more, but then uh, almost everybody now with a camera phone is a photographer. Mm. So you, you don't really... That's a good point. Yeah, so... And then I'm thinking about it and I go deep and I say, okay, this thing, let me try it. Then I come to Abuja, I try to get a job with George Okoro, still as a photographer. Mm. It works out, but then during the test, it turns out that I don't have a very good relationship with the fellow staff, so they don't really like me so much and then I don't <laughs> get the job. <laughs> So you think yeah. it might be your hair? No, I'm just kidding. I don't but, know. But, but, I mean, well, you seem like a pleasant chap to me. Right. But uh, I'll tell you what, let's focus on your work, okay. which uh, I, uh, I think is, is I mean, okay. to, be, to be honest, I find your work absolutely astonishing okay. and so utterly exciting. Uh, I mean, I, what I find very interesting is how fine and expressive it is. I'm a bit of a an art fan myself. Okay. I mean, for instance, I think there's one of them titled In the Midst of Everything. Yes. Um, the eyes of the woman in that, and I hope we can see it um, up on the screen. Um, it's called In the Midst of Everything. No, it's not that one. It's the other one, the close up with, with the woman's eyes. But the eyes of the woman are so expressive and incredibly arresting. What's the story behind that? It's just basically, you yeah, know, there, there it is on the screen. Being there. strong amidst all the troubles and still maintaining your fierceness in it. Yeah, that's know. the one. No, it keeps skipping off. This one. Yeah. So that's why this, this stare is so piercing. Because on the art, there's like splatters of red mm. acrylic paint on her face. They, those, they represent like the dangers you face when you're going through a, a whole lot. So, you know, uh, basically, it was just one situation after another at that point in time when I was making that art for right. me. So then I was just in the midst of everything myself. And then I actually uh, connected it to where I live. And then the place I live to is almost like everything is there. So and it makes me s feel stronger. It makes me feel fierce. And that's why she has that stare mm. on her face. Because actually I made that idea. It's not, it's not an artwork that is movable. I made it on my locker. So I just did a like nice video of it to just put on the internet and that. So yeah, that's that piercing stare. Like yes, I'm in the midst of this, whether good or bad. There's mm. nothing you can do to me. I'm right here. I'm yes. ready to face. Yes, I, I think that's that's a very powerful statement, and that's the way that it came across. I mean, I don't know if you actually realized when you were doing it how powerful a statement you were making. Though. Well, m mostly it's after the art you realize. <laughs> During that, I was just. 
I was just expressing myself at that moment. And then when I was done, I'm like, oh, yes. That's when you then start to look back. But to, to be fair, when the, the producer, Itoro, sent me your photos, that was the one that got my attention. As soon as I saw it, I said, I, I want to be able to, I want to look at these more because it okay. really captured my imagination. But there's also one titled Facing Hurricanes. Yes. Um, what's the story and the message there? Because it sounds like it's sort of related to In the climate news. change, or, or perhaps I'm reading it wrong. I don't know. You climate tell me. Climate change. Hmm. Basically. Well, just from the title, okay. Facing, Facing Hurricanes. hurricanes. I mean. Uh, basically, it actually relates to in the midst of everything. Funny okay, so enough. it's like the storm in, in human yes, lives like or something, is it? Facing hur ex thank you very much. Yeah, that's just it. Facing hurricanes, the issues we face. All of us has mm. faced something hard. And there are times way. life is a lot more yeah. stormy than you yes, thought it would be. thank right. you very much. And then that's facing hurricanes. And actually that facing hurricanes gave birth to in the midst of everything because facing hurricanes you find out that the person's face is blotted out mm, but yes. in the midst of everything there's a whole lot of color all around but her face is like wide, wide open and her mm. eyes are clear so she, she has been through the hurricane now you you understand right she has been through the hurricane and now is in the midst of everything so yeah the reason why i use females is because the spirit is feminine so mm. even as a man, they, we still have some feminine... Yeah, that's, that's you know, the, uh, the hurricane, isn't it? Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I thought that was absolutely superb. I mean, it, it's kind of bordering... Although your art tends to be on one level quite expressive, on the other is quite abstract, because that one looked almost abstract, doesn't yeah. it? Although I, you can detect the sort of the features there. So, so very expressive, sort of enigmatic, serious... But is it also political? Is that a way to describe it? I wouldn't say political. You can see it as political depending on what um, aspect of politics you're talking mm. about. Because even well, I don't mean the APC and the PDP. I mean, I mean, life <laughs> generally is political. Okay. We're all we're all political involved in politics, and and, okay. and those expressions often okay. come from, you know, the effect of political decisions on all our lives, isn't it? Mm, true. No. Yeah, not wrong, but they're not um, definitely... That's not the original intent, because nah, obviously what we intent. want to do is to find out why you're, you know, what's behind the Yeah, art. I was on that, but I, I, I think the story got too long at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you what, what is equally fascinating. You touched on this when we were starting the interview. Um, what is equally fascinating to me about your art... Um, is that you are something of an autodidactic artist. In other words, you are self-taught. Yes. And so you never went to a formal art school. I, I studied political science in UNN. Right. That's like the highest level of education I have. So you, you, were, you were, I mean, you, but you decided that you, you rather than go into you know, one of the parties or whatever, you'd, you'd be an artist. Yeah, basically. Uh, uh, political science, uh, like you said, we as humans, we are political animals mm. and all that. So, yeah, I applied that now to my daily life. Just what I learned in school, I just applied it to my daily life. But I, I believe that something that you will do forever, mm. anything you feel you're going to do forever, should start doing it now. Because I, even if I become a politician, I won't, I'm not going to be a politician forever, but I can mm. be an artist forever till... 70, 80, 90, 100 years. Yes, absolutely. You understand? But I cannot be a political leader forever. So I'm starting now. So I can just become the journey. Become right. So rather than art know. being a profession, it's a vocation for you. Yeah. Okay. Stay with us. We're going to come back and talk some more. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with the charcoal artist, Namdi Ogwejo. For Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyekolu. Now, remember the name Ogwejo for Namdi Chukudi. Um, as you may know, uh, he was born, well, you don't know that, I'm telling you now. He was born in Lagos and studied political science at the University of Nigeria, but then became a self-taught artist who is said to be redefining the visual arts landscape in the country. He has 
an interesting backstory as he began his creative quest. First of all, as he told us earlier, as a photographer who continued to develop his artistry throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's just so recent, isn't it? He's really started getting into this about a year ago. He's now had his first exhibition, which is open to wider claim in Abuja. And it's believed that uh, this blossoming artist will potentially, in the future, have a major impact on the Nigerian art scene. And uh, Ogwejo uh, for Namdi Chukudi is still with me in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. Um, and your artwork, I noticed, is usually based around a theme or a mood. Is it such, you know, each work is informed by a specific event, is it? Or is it just, just random sort of? Well, it's one and the same thing because basically it starts off randomly. Mm -hmm. basically starts off randomly and then when i'm done i arrive at my conclusion and say okay it, it, it basically reflects the state of mind i am in mm -hmm. it reflects something i might be experiencing it reflects something that just might be like my environment i don't know that yet yeah but you see the thing <laughs> about it is that those are broad themes Yes, that's, that's what I'm coming to. So yeah. I, I don't know that yet until I'm done with this art and then the art explains itself to me. No, but what I mean is that if you're in a mood, let's say you're in a bad mood mm -hmm. or, or you're in a jolly, happy mood or whatever, how do you decide that this is the sort of image that's going to personify that mood that you're in? Well, that's, that's where it is now. I don't think there's... For me, all my emotions are present. All it takes is what, what is going to awaken that emotion. Yeah, I know, but what I'm saying is if, if you're feeling happy... Yeah, it what, doesn't, what, what, it doesn't really influence Yeah, anything. but how do you decide that happiness, the image of happiness is going to be a flower? I'm giving you an example. Or a butterfly, or, or a woman smiling, or dancing, or skipping around gaily, or whatever. I, I mean, do not get to decide. That's what I'm trying to say. I do not get to decide that. It doesn't really, it's not even really based on, my, based off of my mood. I just feel like I want to make art. Something mm. is knocking on my imagination. Right. Something is banging inside me like, hey man, I want to come out, I want to come out, show me to someone. And I'm like, oh, all right. I, then I just pick my tools and I start doing something and then next thing it's out there. And what has been disturbing me, actually something that reflects me or someone else who comes to see it or something random. People see my art, so I drop them, and then they get their own personal message. I came and they, somebody, I made an art sometime and dropped it somewhere. Someone was like, I've been dreaming of this woman since before I came here, and I've seen this picture here. I'm like, bro, I don't know. Hmm. I was feeling some type of why I made that art. You have been dreaming of it. I don't even know such a person, because that's happened like once or twice. So I don't, it doesn't really, it's not based off of my mood sure. or anything. When I'm happy, I'm happy. When I'm sad, I'm sad. It doesn't have anything to do with it. So, I mean, I'm looking at the, the artwork on the big screen behind you. Um, it, it, it almost looks like an alien. Yeah. Because, I mean, you've got those big black eyes, uh, the, the long, thin neck, and the kind of protuberant head. W what's the idea behind that one? Well, basically, um, it, it stands for, because I, I wouldn't really like to take like all the, let's say all the credit of, I, I wouldn't like to say I make this art for my personal right. consumption. This relates to anybody. So this art has to do with people who are alienated in wherever they are. Okay, I, I see the, I understand the idea. You know, so this, this is an alien, this is somebody who people alienate in right. the society. You can't say that, that there's, there's skyscrapers, like there's a city. Mm. The title of that work is Finding uh, myself in the world and the world in myself. That is knowing who you are here and then knowing, knowing who you are in the world and knowing who the world is in you. Mm. You understand? That's so, a profoundly philosophical statement. So, yeah. And also enormously dialectical because, I mean, you're looking at the interaction between yourself 
the subjective, the objective. I mean, you could argue that the, the, the world outside is objective and, and inside is subjective. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, and, and let's talk about your use of charcoal. Okay. Because that's another thing that got, got quite a bit of interest. How do you use that? Because it's not just charcoal that you use, is it? Yeah, I use charcoal, acrylic paint, spray paint. Uh, on some cases, pastel chalk. Mm. Uh, yeah, and sometimes I can, like my first exhibition, I added calories. I added some like external items just to make the arts look more alive. Right. So, but why I like charcoal is because of the depth. You can make the shallowest and the deepest shades with charcoal. Not, not really any, uh, there, there's, there, you can know there's how you can go only so deep with paint. Mm. You can go only so deep with any other thing, but charcoal, you can bring out the blackest and then still in that blackest, the moment you just touch your eraser on it, it becomes white again. Mm. So you can bring out the blackest and the lightest shades from charcoal. So it, it kind of reflects uh, basically we, who we are as people. You find some people are shallow, you find some people are deep. Mm. That's charcoal. Charcoal is both shallow, charcoal is both deep. What do you want it to be? Just like a person, what do you want a person to be to you? It's how you act towards them that will, they will reflect. So charcoal reflects the soul to me. That's why I always do my best to add it into my work. So, you know. Fascinating. But how did you discover that you wanted to use charcoal as a way of expressing these things that you're talking I about? Know, I, I guess I just, okay, yeah. Uh, I, I, ha I had a friend, an artist friend, when I was still trying to get on the art thing, mm. and I was trying to meet my artists, connect, like any artist I know, let, let me know how you guys get these things done too, because, you know, I, I, I want to graduate from drawing on paper, because mm. I only could draw on paper and there was nothing else. I, there was a time I used to even paint shirts in secondary school, but I stopped and all of that. So I was just stuck with Byron paper and sketch pads and all that. So I wanted to evolve from that. So I have this artist, I had this artist friends in Lagos. I visited them. I saw how they do their stuff. And then one of them that used to be my close friend too in junior secondary school, he was making an artwork that he was posting on WhatsApp. He was using charcoal to draw it. I don't know whether he finished it or not. And I'm thinking that, wow, this works. Because he was still complaining. He hadn't mm. yet hacked it. He was still trying charcoal on canvas. And I'm thinking, like, OK, charcoal on canvas, it looks real good and all of that. And I, I'm, in my own photography, I do black and white pictures. Mm. So black and white. Yes, I see what you mean. On, something that came naturally yeah. almost to so, you. Uh, and I, so I fell in love with it there. I didn't know whether he finished the artwork or anything. Mm. So during that COVID-19 lockdown, I got some cash. I went to buy some canvas, and then I bought charcoal. I said, now nah, let me, because I'd already even been using charcoal on sketch pads, charcoal pencils, and all of that. So I said, now nah, let me try it on canvas. Since I've seen this guy, he has mm. attempted it. So, and then I did it. It and was, that it was, about it was kind of hell, but yeah. Yeah, it fairly did, recently was that? Yeah, last year, basically, I don't know, uh, April. Right. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and while you're creating your artwork, do you, do you make mistakes and then learn from those mistakes? I mean, do you sort of do something and think, ah, oh, well, tear it up and start all over again? No, when, when oh, I, I, that was like then when I still used to do paper art. But mm. right now, when it starts, it starts. There's no stopping, there's no mistakes, there's nothing. There's nothing like a mistake. Anything that is there, you improvise. You don't, I, I don't make an artwork and say, oh no, it's ruined, not true. Oh no. That's, to me, it's like, it's expression. Yes. So, so it doesn't matter how it comes out. It, that's that art. is what it's supposed to be. Well, it comes out rather well, to be honest, what you. It, however you do it. Mm. And what are the things that have had an impact on your art? I mean, you know, for some people, I've heard them say that, you know, they went through a war or some sort of trauma or sort of peak experience. I mean, what, what's it for you? Um, you know, I mean, some, some say, you know, the COVID pandemic, the role of women in well, society. I, I mean, th there's a whole load of things, aren't there? I've, I've been through a whole lot of like crazy situations in my life. So I, there was a period in my life during the first time I started this mm. charcoal art, I kind of imploded. Yeah. You imploded? I imploded. Right. Basically. I hope we're like, safe in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not going to implode or perhaps explode no, no, no. in here? No, 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 I think maybe, maybe the tears something else something new wants to come out i don't know but for right now <laughs> we're all safe. Will trigger it, <laughs> yeah but well i better be careful what i say then. so yeah i just you know i i looked at myself and i used to listen to this become your god self become the best you can be awaken that da vinci in you awaken mm. all these like talks motivational talks i just used to listen to them i'm like how can i be the best in something 
you know? And then I'm just really searching and searching and searching, and then I go mad. And then I come back to my senses, and then I'm like, okay, yeah. And then you realize this is really what you ought to be doing. Yeah. And would you say that your art is a sort of self-regarding tendency? And by that I mean, is it pretty much an experience that you do by yourself? Or do you sometimes engage and involve people or communities in your project? Well, I, I do everything myself, basically. Well, unless maybe I want to At least at exhibition. this stage, yeah, it's unless, just yourself, yeah, is it? Unless maybe there's an exhibition that I can invite that come and see what I've done. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. and, and of course, um, you, 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 te you taught yourself art, but you know, to a level of proficiency, which is quite a remarkable feat. Um, I mean, to the point where people are coming around, I mean, they're coming for your exhibition, they're admiring your paintings, they're, they're, they're your works, they're, they're buying them. Um, but that, you, you said you were originally going to be a political scientist. I mean, what made you study political science? Because you could have studied I, art in I, school. I, yeah, you? It, basically, I wouldn't lie. I was scared of my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he... Well, guess uh, what, mate? <laughs> I was scared of my dad too. Well, <laughs> I guess we're friends now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so you were terrified of your father. Yeah, I was, I was supposed to study law. So even the political science was an issue. The reason right. why he just let it slide was because I came in on the merit list. Like my first jam, first post me, all the stuff. They just clicked. I didn't have to write an exam twice. Mm. So he was so happy and proud of me. Like, okay, at least this political science, now you can do something. And after that, you still study law though. And I'm, but, but at first, he, when I first told him my post political science, he told me I was going to pay my school fees myself. <laughs> uh, he's not talking to me through my result. I'm like, he doesn't care about that. And, and, and I just left. I'm like, okay. But then when the list came out and everything came out, he, the name, it, it was the newspapers. Mm. So he saw my name, his son's name in the newspaper, like merit list of UNN. So that just washed away all my sins. So, so when, when Your I... Your considerable <laughs> number of sins. <laughs> you know. So yeah, so when I... Uh, got into political science. I, only, I wasn't really doing well in school. I graduated with the third class. So I wasn't really doing well with the political science. I was I, I, in the classes they were teaching, I would be drawing on my notebooks. Like people would be looking, I'm like, oh, boy, why, didn't, why are you not studying visual art? Why are you not studying fine art? I'm like, bro, my father, man. Yeah. Like when I got to 200 level, I had failed so much that I, I called my mom. I thought I wanted to stop going to school. She was like, no, I should just finish this one first at least. Like if, if anything, I should just try. And I'm like, okay. Then I talked to my friends, like, why don't I just change department and be collecting school fees later? But I was so freaking terrified. So I mean, all those, all that was just, it just ended in my room with my friends and all of that. So I was just drawing everything. So when I graduated from school, I did my NYC. During my NYC, I started getting back into art again. I started drawing on sketch pads again. I started, you know, I, I was working in the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development as one of the press units for the minister. So. Then even in the office there, I used to still draw. The staff would look at me and say, you're very good. And then like, what would you plan to do with this? And I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. You know, I was still on that, I was still in a kind of mm. bubble. Well, I, I have to so say yeah. that um, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't stick with the political science <laughs> that you came to art because we would yeah. never have encountered you otherwise. And, and your artwork is brilliant and I would urge you to stay with it. Okay. Thank you very much indeed for coming in to talk to us. Uh, Namdi Chukudi Oguejofo is yeah. a charcoal artist and he's based here in Abuja.